Good day, dear friends. Advent has always been a very special part of the year for me. And Advent means the arrival or the appearance. And that term is usually associated with someone who is notable. So it is fair to say that those who lived in the times of the Old Testament were looking for the Advent, the coming or the appearance of Christ. In fact, Advent is not limited to those that are still waiting for Jesus to come. We who are His children are also looking for the Advent of Christ, His second appearance. But here is the sad thing. Some are not going to be ready for His second coming. Now that should be no surprise to me because some were not ready for His first coming despite all that was said about the Messiah coming to earth from the mouths of the prophets. Today I want to look at some persons who missed the first advent, the innkeeper and his guest. And I want us to see what we can learn from them so that we don't miss the second advent or see what we can learn so we can tell others so that they don't miss the second advent. We read the story of the innkeeper and his guest today in Luke 2 verse 1 to 7. And we read from the New King James Version and it says, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Kaiser Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Did you notice the last two words of verse 7 that we just read? The inn. What does every inn have? An innkeeper and his guest, right? There must be someone who manages the place and people who stay there, the guests. In our story that we just read, we are told that this innkeeper met a woman who was near time to deliver her baby, but there is no mention of him trying to accommodate her in his inn. I know it was full, but you could always find room if you wanted to find room. Haven't you in the past done that when family came to town, even though you had a full house? You did not turn them away, you found room. Maybe the innkeeper could have found a space in the corner of a room where you could roll out a mat and let a pregnant woman have a warm place to spend the night. But instead, this innkeeper did not want to be bothered or inconvenienced, so he sends her out, telling her that, that, that there is just no place, no room in his inn. And the guests staying at the inn, they make no effort to rearrange their own accommodations to make room for Mary in their room. And what is so interesting to me, Advent had come to this innkeeper and to these guests, and they missed it. And I want to know why. Well, firstly, I believe that sometimes we are so busy doing life that we miss the miraculous. Luke 2 verse 7 says the following, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. For the innkeeper, business was good. A crowded inn meant that the innkeeper was running here and there, making sure that his guests were satisfied. But think of all the money that he was making. And the sad commentary is that he was so busy doing life that he missed that the Savior of the world in the womb of Mary walking into his establishment. The innkeeper did not have time for Jesus, and so he pushed Jesus out. There is no room here for you. 
Jesus had so much to say in the New Testament about doing life that you miss the miraculous. To Martha, who was so busy in the kitchen preparing a meal for Jesus and his disciples that she got no time to spend with him, Jesus tells Martha, You are careful and troubled about many things, but you are neglecting the most important thing, time with me. She was so busy doing life that she was missing that the Son of God was in her house. Jesus gave the parable about the farmer who, who, whose barns were full and he still had more crops to bring in from the field. And so he said to himself, I need to build bigger barns so that I can sit and enjoy life. The farmer was so busy doing life, planning for what he had not, come, not yet had, that he never thought about where he will spend eternity. He was not prepared when the death angel visited him that night. And then Jesus says to each one of us in Matthew 16 verse 29, in, uh, sorry, 16 verse 26, the New King, King James Version. He says, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I want to read that again. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? This innkeeper was so busy that he missed the miraculous. Martha was so busy doing the household chores that she missed the miraculous. And the farmer was busy planning out his future here on earth. He gave no thought to eternity. But the real danger is that maybe somebody listening today or maybe a family member of yours or a friend of you know might miss the miraculous because they are so busy doing life. Jesus knows very well that when he returns the second time, some will not be in the number that he gathers up because they were too busy doing life. Secondly, I believe that sometimes we are so self-focused on our own little world that we ignore the needs of others. Let's think back to that inn that is at full occupancy. Was this inn always that full? Probably not. It was a decree of Kaiser Augustus that families must return to their own cities to be registered for the census, that, and that caused the inn to be so full. The inn would have been full of family coming to be registered, mums, dads, and their children. In the account that Luke told of the birth, I always found it puzzling that no guest in the inn offered to give up his space for the pregnant woman. When I was in Albania as a missionary, I had to take the public bus many times. And I was taught that when the bus had no more seats available, you always gave up your seat to a lady, especially to one who is pregnant or one with a small ch child. And I'm sure the guest at the inn must have seen Mary when they came in, saw that she was pregnant, but no one was willing to give up their room. Well, I understand that it is asking a lot of a person to give up their room, but nobody even made some room in their room for her. Couldn't a family rearrange their sleeping arrangements by doubling up the children in one bed? thereby freeing up a bed for this pregnant woman? Couldn't the family put a child on the floor to sleep on a mat? But no one offered to even do that. And what was most appalling to me was even after Jesus was born in the stable behind the inn and the news filtered into the inn that the pregnant woman had her child, there is no mention that even one of the guests in that inn came to check on the newborn and his mother. What can be said about the guest? Certainly it can be said that they were all self-centered, caring only about their little world and shutting others in need. It kind of reminds me of the story of the Good Samaritan. A man was left near death on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. A Levite and a priest, two people who you thought should have cared, 
saw the man and passed him by on the other side. It was a Samaritan who took care of him. God does warn us through 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5. And I'm ready, reading, reading for you from the NIV. It's 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5. And it says the following. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godly, godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them, it says. Well, doesn't that sound just like the times we are living in? The same way it was at the inn at the first advent, that is how it is going to be at his second coming. What do I need to do? I need to take care that I do not repeat the mistake of the innkeeper or his guests. I need to be ready for his second coming by letting my love shine. To conclude, it would be tragic to leave Jesus out of the Advent time and Christmas 2021 because I am too busy or because I am so absorbed in my own little world. That's what what happened the first Christmas and that same time have been happening in many homes Christmas after Christmas and sadly that will be the way it will be all the way up to the second advent as for me I choose to look for the miraculous and I choose to let my light shine and I hope you can say the same during this Advent time. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, we know that many times we are so busy with doing our things, doing things that is of this world, Lord, that we miss out on the miraculous, that we miss out on spending time with you. Lord, and my prayer is especially during this Advent time and Christmas time as well, that we will draw near to you Lord, that we will seek you and seek your face, especially where there's a new year lying ahead as well. Lord, I pray that you will speak to us. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen.